part of the reason why the people on the meat-based diet diet was lower in protein than people following a, a plant-based diet was because they had so many calories from oil added to their food. Because when we added up their 2,000 calorie diet, 500 calories came from oil on their food. That's a quarter of the calories in their diet. Take away, take a quarter of your protein out of the diet and throw it in the garbage because you just put oil on your food. If I took that 500 calories from oil and I put 500 calorie nuts and seeds in there, I would have just gotten 20 grams of protein into the ex extra into the diet. You follow me? Can you define the, the type of oil? Is it like seed oil or is it just any oil, olive oil, <laughs> avocado oil? Yeah. Any oil. Oil does not any contain oil. protein. It's 100% fat. And because oil has such a high caloric rush, it is an appetite stimulant. And it also you get addicted to the caloric rush. Because the caloric rush foods are, the, are you know, maple syrup and honey and sugar and white flour because they are so glycemically unfavorable in white rice. And the high caloric rush foods are also oil and animal fats. It's butter and oil and white flour and sugar that put so much calories into the bloodstream that can affect the dopamine centers in the brain to make you dopamine insensitive and get that rush like you ate, like you snorted cocaine. And people become addicted to the caloric rush. They can't stop eating these foods. They don't want to give it up. And they don't want to talk about nutrition. They don't want to know about nutrition. It's irritating to them. They just want to stick into their, they just, they're, they're habituated to their caloric rush of eating high calorie foods and they don't care if they're overweight. Oil is a contributor to being overweight. It makes people want to eat more calories because not only does it stimulate the brain to become dopamine insensitive and to drive the risk of calories, but it, also, but it also drives fat storage hormones that makes it difficult to lose weight. And of course, you know, it also decreases the protein content of your diet proportionally to use those fats. And also people cook with those fats and heat them up, which causes rancidity which makes them pro-inflammatory as well and destructive to the, to the um, intraepithelial, you know, tight junctions between your digestive tract are destructive to the health of the digest digestive tract as well when you heat oils. So there's a lot of more factors we can talk about, but wow. um, what, one of the hallmarks of a nutritarian diet, what I recommend is that we're, where people are getting their fat we're not, are from nuts and seeds and avocado, not from oils and animal fats. So would you recommend- so cut out zero oil oils? completely? Yeah. Yes, cut out oil completely. Now, I don't care if a person has a little bit of animal product, a little bit of egg or a little bit of fish, a little bit of some, you know, salamander, snake, gopher, frog. You know, I'm kind of, it's not even a joke because primitive humans. What's that? <laughs> Food sources. Those are some interesting choices. Yeah. Yeah, because what are people, if they're, we're not eating the primitive humans, if they ate some animal products, wouldn't be, be you know, ch ch you know, running down cows. They, they wouldn't That's be eating true. big animals and kill wild beasts and, you know, We'd be eating, you know, even the carnivore animals, they will not eat another carnivore. The carnivorous animals will only eat a plant-based eater. In other words, the, the cats won't kill a hyena and eat it. They'll kill a hyena, but they won't eat it. They'll only eat, you know, those animals eating plant foods. It doesn't taste good to eat the carnivore animals. But in any case, I'm saying right now is that we're not putting our fat down so low. We're still eating fat, which are healthy fats, but, we're, but oil is a processed food. And it behaves in the body like a processed food. And that also distorts insulin resistance because, body, so it, because it goes right to the fat stores and it makes you now. So when you put oil on your food, you've taken the protein out, you're making yourself more insulin resistant and, the, because the, and, absorb, and you increased your ap appetite and your appetite. You make you want more food and it's destructive to the lining of the digestive tract. So I'm making this radical comment that's that, such as olive oil is, is a cause of breast cancer. And the reason I could wow. say olive oil causes breast cancer is because if you put olive oil on your food, you're keeping yourself, you're keeping your body fat elevated. And if you're keeping your body fat elevated, you're increasing the risk of breast cancer and prostate cancer because body fat is a risk factor for breast cancer, for these cancers. It's hormonally, body fat increases estrogen production, it increases insulin production, it increases pro-inflammatory cytokines and lipokines. It, in, in other words, it has Body fat is a major cause of cancer. And if you're putting oil on your food, it's going to inhibit you losing weight. It's going to prevent you from getting that dangerous body fat off your body. And therefore, it's increasing the risk of cancer. Wow. So I've heard people say that, you know, when you're eating, let's say, uh, a salad, you're not really absorbing the nutrients unless you're putting some sort of fat with it. So that's why they recommend you use, eat it with oil. But with this new understanding, that's actually not true. It needs to be a nut that you're actually eating the salad with versus let's say olive oil. That's correct. It's true. You absorb 20 to 50 times as much of the carotenoids, for example, 
if you eat fat with the meal. So we increase, we absorb more of the anti-cancer phytochemicals when we eat fat with our vegetables. That's why we make a salad dressing like out of some tomato sauce with almonds and hemp seeds and roasted garlic and black and black fig vinegar, you know, and we make these delicious salad dressings with nuts and seeds, not with oil because the biology is very different. Wow. So, so, you know, my, uh, you know, I have like kind of, kind of fundamental question here is like, you know, oils are used as lubricants, like, you know, stainless steel cook pans, things like that. Like wh what's the alternative there? Do you just use a little bit of it when you're cooking and that's it? Or do you have to find an alternative as well to that? If you're LeBron James and you're, you know, you're six foot eight and your caloric needs are 4,000 calories a day, you're not going to hurt yourself with a half a teaspoon of olive oil in your food because you're going to burn up the calories anyway. And you can, you're still eating enough of the healthy stuff, enough room in your caloric pie to eat enough healthy stuff. Right. But if you're a person yeah. who's a, you know, a five foot two woman and you're eating two tablespoons of oil a day and putting 240 calories in your diet for, and it comes out to be a, you know, a fifth of your caloric intake is oil. You know what I mean? So we're talking here about yeah. a huge difference of a little bit of oil to a physical, to a highly competitive athlete who's a high caloric requirement versus a little oil to a person who doesn't, who's trying to restrict calories. But anyway, the, the point is that, yes, I don't cook with oil either. I, I water cook foods. I walk them in water or in tomato sauce or, or, or you know, or pineapple or I'm walking them in apricot sauce or but whatever it is we're wa cooking or walking. Thanks. Whatever it is we're walking or cooking them in, I can then add like a Thai curry sauce on top of that. Once it's once my broccoli and mushrooms and snow pea pods are cooked up together, I can just take a tablespoon of Thai curry sauce, mix it in there with has the, you know, the turmeric and the lemongrass and the date and the coconut. I'm mixing it in there, but I'm not cooking it in the fat. I'm adding the sauce on after it's cooked. Isn't fat oh. important uh, for our bodies? Um, you know, we're talking about the cell membranes and all these hormones that require fat. Um, especially like since these are plant derived, right? Olive oil, you know, avocado oil. Yes. Supposedly they're supposed to be healthy from what. Yes. And that's true because if you take the studies show that if you take the fat completely out of the diet, the people are worse off. It's better to use olive oil than no fat. And it's better to use olive oil than butter and animal fat, but it's not better to use olive oil compared to walnuts, hemp seeds, flax seeds, olives, and avocado. It's best to use the whole food. And that's what the Prevamid study showed. It compared, it showed that olive oil was better than butter or nothing. But the most heart attacks in the longest lifespan occurred in people who were eating nuts and seeds at baseline, who were then randomized to the intervention group that told them to eat nuts and seeds, not olive oil. So the group, so the longest lifespan is in people getting their fat from nuts and seeds, not from olive oil, even though there's some benefits from fat. And, and that's why I'm advocating that pushing, that these people who see diets with oil being bad and so many of these low fat plant-based eaters or advocates are telling people to remove all fat and painting nuts and seeds as bad with the same negative brush as they painted oils with, especially heated oils. And they're making false claims that are confusing and distort, like they're saying, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. Whatever fat you eat goes on your body. Not true. And, they don't, and, and the studies they reference to document though that are not true because they're documenting studies that used oil, not use nuts and seeds. We can't compare the walnut oil to a walnut or corn oil to corn or sesame oil to sesame seeds. We pull the studies in the whole food. You don't see the negative effects. There are people who are, who are advocating people with diabetes, not use any fat because you don't want to block your insulin receptors. But they're wrong because the studies they're documenting that that, that data from are studies using oil, not studies using nuts and seeds as a source of fat. When you need to use nuts and seeds as a source of fat, we don't see negative effects on insulin receptors and things like that. So we're talking here about um, being, be, being clear so people aren't confused. And so many people in the plant-based world are creating controversies where no controversy exists. There's no controversy well, think... that a low, low omega-3 index is dangerous for your future mental health. No controversy there. We know that every study, there's no controversy that taking all the, thinking nuts and seeds are bad for us and taking all the nuts and seeds out of our diet in some effort to reduce weight or to be reverse heart disease low is not, is not best and it's not necessary. And there's, there's no controversy. So I'm saying here that there's, there's certain issues here that should be more consistently accepted and not be such a controversial issue. And there's really not much controversy that reducing animal products and having more plant sources is healthier. However, we can't say with 100% assurance that making everybody a vegan as they age is going to be best for them. We don't know that that's the case. It may be the case. I think it's the case. 
Well, we can't prove that that's better than, let's say, 5% or 10, 5% of animal products with a small amount. We don't know that for, for sure because some people do better with a little bit of animal products as they age and their ability to pro protein absorption goes down. Some people do feel stronger, they sleep better, and they feel better and they function better in, in their later life with a little bit of animal product mixed in, in their diet in small amounts. So I'm not um, saying that it's a completely one size fits all approach, but it's still, we're leaning to, to suspect that to live longest, it's probably healthiest to go all plant-based if you can. You'd recommend everybody be, at, be 80, 90% plant-based. Correct. 90% or more plant-based. If you have to use animal products for some medical reason why you thrive better with it, keep it to a small amount in the diet because there's so much benefit from all the plant material the phytochemicals you're going to eat. So these keto and carnivore people thinking it's okay to take all these phytochemicals out, which they actually criticize the phytochemicals as being, you know, as being negatives and things because they told them they, they are anti-nutrients, they buy nutrients, they are, yeah. you know, they have lectin. So they actually, you know, people think just eat meat. Well, that's a hypothesis that's been disproven because we have, we follow people on high meat diets to their, with, on, and every study that's done so shows shorter lifespans. We have the data and the only data they can produce are short chain studies where people got, you know, soft endpoints, like they lost weight, their diabetes looks better, they're feeling better, they're stronger. Those are soft endpoints. A hard endpoint means you go to death and you see how long the person lived and what they died of. And all the hard endpoint studies show shorter lifespans with people trying to get control their soft endpoints with, with high meat intake. It's like, you know, you could lose well, weight smoking cigarettes. You could lose weight taking all the carbohydrate out and just eating meat. Your diabetes numbers might look better, but that doesn't mean you're going to live longer doing that. You got to, what's the data on people doing that for their, till they're to the end of their life? How long did they live? And they didn't live very long.